Good morning. It is Wednesday, January 6, 2021. Um, so our first demo days of the new year. And this is for Science of Cooking. Today we're going to be making a recipe for buttermilk biscuits, right? Real easy to do. Uh, once you learn the technique of making biscuits and not over mixing, and they're not super complicated to make, you'll have a nice, soft, tender, and flavorful biscuit in the end. Uh, so the recipe is posted to the Google Classroom and will be posted with the video in the comments uh, as well. But it is really simple. It's very few ingredients that go into this, but it's more about the technique than anything else, okay, and taking your time with each step that we do. So I've got here a large mixing bowl and a whisk. We're going to start with the dry ingredients first, and then we're going to add in our butter, and then we'll add in our buttermilk last. So it's going to be a layering effect of ingredients as we go. Okay, but we're going to start um, with the dry, which is going to be two cups of all-purpose flour, which is what I've got right here. Okay, so you want to have a spoon and a butter knife handy because you want to make sure that you're scooping your flour into the cup so you're not getting too much compacted in. Okay, so using a spoon to get the flour in there. So I don't want these to be biscuits that are too dry and too tough. So we want just enough flour. So remember to overfill your cup and then use the back edge just a plain butter knife just scrape that clean on the top right so we get our nice level one cup so we're going to be doing two of those today this is a fairly quick recipe comes together nicely so it's something that can be done easily on the weekends for breakfast and things so two level cups of all-purpose flour I'm going to go into our mixing bowl. Like I said, I just got a whisk here because we're going to be stirring everything together shortly. Now, for the other ingredients, we're going to need some baking powder. And we're going to need two teaspoons of powder right here. We're going to get nice level spoon measurements. So use that inside metal lip on the can. Just scrape that out right as you go. So that's what that's there for. So we've got one and two. So baking powder is going to give us our rise a little bit at first, but also the rise in the oven as well. Okay. And then we're going to do a teaspoon of salt. I'm using kosher salt here. You can use regular table salt. That's fine. Or you can use sea salt. And then we're going to do a quarter teaspoon, so one slash four, right? Just a smaller quarter teaspoon of the baking soda. So this one does use both baking powder and baking soda, which we've been talking a lot about in the past this week. So we're just going to use a little quarter teaspoon of that. It's the same thing. Scrape it clean so you get a nice level measurement every time. So the baking powder is going to help give us our rise. The baking soda will as well. But because the baking powder is going in with buttermilk, it tends to neutralize out the flavor. So adding the baking soda in will help enhance the tanginess of your biscuits. Okay. So once you have all your dry ingredients in the bowl, you want to mix everything really well. You know, 20, 30 seconds. You just want to make sure that that baking powder and soda and salt is fully incorporated into our flour mixture. This also helps lighten up the mixture a little bit and work out any large lumps that you might have missed when you were scooping the flour, okay? Especially if it's a humid day and things like that. So we've got our dry ingredients here, which I'm going to set aside for a couple of secs. And we're going to talk about the fat, okay? So for this, we're going to be using unsalted butter. Okay, almost a full stick. Okay, this is going to use seven tablespoons. So one stick of butter is eight tablespoons. So we're going to be cutting one off. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just make a little indentation here, a little mark, a little press. So when I unwrap this, I know where that's marked, right? That's what those little lines are for, for every tablespoon over. Okay, now you can use other fats to make biscuits. And you will find a bunch of different biscuit recipes for um, biscuits with shortening, like vegetable shortening like a Crisco, um, and also for lard. This butter is cold, okay? So this just came out of the fridge a few minutes ago. Um, if it's not cold enough, you can always put it in the freezer, too, to get it really chilled. But if you are using something like shortening or lard in its place, make sure that you take measure that out and put it in the freezer for about a good half hour to make sure that it's really good and cold before you try to make the biscuits with it, okay? Don't use margarine. The margarine has too much of a water content, so it won't come out um, as nice of a biscuit. Okay. So I made my mark on the butter. 
right? And this is just a little bench scraper, which is great for doing things with doughs, right? So I'm just gonna cut that one tablespoon off and set it to the side. So you don't need that, but you could use that to butter your biscuits after they come out of the oven, right? So I'm gonna slice this up and throw this into my bowl with my flour mixture and my baking powder, soda, and salt. So this is what I like to use. You can use a knife for this. The bench scrapers come in so handy for cutting things like butter. It's easy on your hands up here too because you've got a nice curved handle to this. You can find these in the kitchen section of any of your major department stores or online. Okay. That a little bit. So all of these are going to go in. So that's seven tablespoons total of unsalted butter. Like I said, this was the extra one we didn't need, so we're going to set that to the side. Now we need to mix in the butter and the flour together. You can do this by hand. It'll take a little bit longer, but you're going to, if you're doing it by hand, you just want to break up the little bits and pieces with your fingertips. But you're going to want to coat everything with flour as well to make it a little bit easier, less of a mess. Uh, what I'm going to be using here is it called a pastry blender. Okay, and this has a nice handle, you want one that's got a nice solid handle on the top, it's a solid construction. And we're going to do a rocking motion, right? So kind of think of like a wave pool as you go, okay? So we're going to cover all our butter here with some flour. Now this will stick to the pastry blender a little bit from time to time, so you will need to clean this as you go. But remember that rocking motion, right? It's a rhythm. So I'm coming through, I'm moving my hand around the bowl, you can spin the bowl too. And what we're trying to do is to break up all those little bits of butter into small pieces. You'll still see some of them when we're mixing the biscuits, just like when you're making a good pie dough, you'll still see some of that fat. And that's perfectly fine. We don't want to overmix. That's the biggest thing. Okay, over -mix mixing on your biscuits will make them tough. Nobody wants a tough biscuit. Right. So this will take a couple of minutes to do. This is good to do on a day that you're having a lot of stress. You want to work out some frustration. And this is what they call cutting in the fat. So cutting the fat into small little bits. And I said occasionally clean off that pastry blender. I said if you don't have one of these, you can use some you know large fork, and you can do a lot of this by hand as well. It'll just take a little bit longer to do than using the pastry blender. So we're looking to get little bits and chunks on our biscuits. Just a little bit more. Let's see a couple of bigger pieces here. I'm breaking up. And that's it. Okay. So we've cut in the fat. Okay. And then we're going to start to mix in our buttermilk. Okay. Now for that, you just want to make a little well in the center of the bowl. So just spread it out a little bit. And we're going to be using three quarters of a cup of buttermilk. Okay, if you don't have buttermilk at home, you can use regular milk. You just want to add in a teaspoon of lemon juice to it to let it sour a little bit, and that'll make buttermilk for you. Okay. So I'm just going to pour that right into the center of my well. Okay, and then you can use your hands, or you could use a spoon or a spatula. Right? You know, so something like a wooden spoon. You could use a little dough scraper. These are great little plastic tools because you can shape them and curve them to the bowl. Okay. So I'm just going to pull that flour in the outside edge, start to mix this together. Okay. Now don't worry about it looking lumpy and not quite right. Okay. It's going to take a minute for that flour to absorb all that buttermilk up. Okay. So give it time. Do you want to get it mixed just enough so that it comes together as one mass? So just kind of keep folding it over. You notice I'm just kind of folding, right? I'm not being super tough. I'm not kneading this dough, okay? I want it just combined so it looks like this, okay? And we're going to do more mixing right on the counter. So you want to make sure that... When you do this, you have a nice, clean, dry counter. Okay. And we're going to work it right on the bench. All right. 
when you're doing things on your countertop like this, it's easier because we can spread it out and do our cutting right here. So I'm going to take a little bit of flour. So this is a little bit of that all-purpose flour. You don't need a lot. You just want to use a little at a time. Okay. So I'm going to take and set a little pile here off to the side. Extra. Doesn't hurt either to put a little on your hands when you're working with things like this, right? So that way you're not sticking to everything. But we're going to take our biscuit dough right onto our flour surface. That's why these little bench scrapers come in handy, especially the plastic ones. I said because they're flexible. Okay. Now, for this, we want to pat the dough out. Right? It doesn't look like it's going to make a good biscuit, right? It, it, look at the texture right now. You're like, how is that going to come out smooth? It will. That flour right now is absorbing that moisture from the buttermilk, right? So that's why we don't want to overmix this. We want to let that do its work. Okay. So we'll start to pat this out. It will start to come together. It won't look like it at first. But you just got to give it a little bit of time. I said, if it starts to get too sticky on your hands, you have a little flour on your hands as we go through. So we're going to go back to using our metal scraper here. You can use a plastic one too, but that one, I would want to wash it in between because it's a little too sticky at the moment. But I'm just going to put a little flour on that make sure it's not wet anywhere. Butter. From cutting our butter, right? And we want to fold this, what we call a book fold, okay, or a letter fold. So I'm going to fold this into thirds three times. Okay. So use this, fold it up. Come this way. Same thing. Okay. And then we're going to use a little bit of flour, but not a lot. And we're going to pat this out again. But I want to make sure also, I'm not sticking to the counter here, and then I want to flip this over. Because this is the seam right here where I just folded that. So I want to flip that over. Now I want to pat this out again to somewhat of a rectangular shape so I can do another fold. Feels a little sticky. It's a little sprinkle of flour. Just not too much. You don't want super dry biscuits. Right? And a lot of this is being handled. So this is great to do when you're stressed out. Very therapeutic. So we're going to do another third fold here one here okay and remember we're going to flip that because this is our seam right here we want to put that down to the bottom make sure we're keeping our surface lightly floured i'm going to do it one more time okay. so this is helping to combine those ingredients together right without kneading the dough you can do a lot with just the padding motion of your hand This is our third fold. Okay. A lot of this folding technique and things is also done with things like danishes and croissants. Okay. It was a great technique for folding layers of fat into your pastry, which is what we did. We did end up with three folds of three each. Okay. Once you have it like this, you can just pat the dough out to make your biscuits. You don't need a rolling pin, but you can use one. My handy here. Okay. I want to put a little bit of flour on my pin. Make sure there's no wet spots. Same thing. If it starts to stick at all, too, just re flour. Okay. We want to roll this out to about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch thick. Right? The thinner you go, the thinner the biscuits are going to be. But we want to get about 12 biscuits total. Okay. So I'm going to be using a round biscuit cutter that is about two and a half. Two and a quarter inches wide, somewhere around there. Okay. Looks like this. Okay, so about the size of the palm of my hand. Okay, um, you can go larger, you can go smaller with this. I'm just trying to thin out the edges so that everything's nice and even. Okay, now when you're cutting your biscuits, you want to cut them as close as you possibly can because anything that you re roll never comes out quite as good the second time out, right? It gets a little bit tougher and chewier. And those are kind of like the biscuits that, you know, we, we sample in the kitchen. Those are for the chef, right? So for you. Okay. So when you're using the cutter, 
And so it can be a metal one, that could be a plastic one. You could also use a drinking glass. Uh, you could use, you know, a measuring cup, things like that. Whatever you have that has that same shape. You could do round biscuits, square biscuits, right? That doesn't matter. Little heart-shaped biscuits, you know, for Valentine's Day coming up and things. So I want to get as close to the edge as I can. I put a little flour on my cutter, keep it from the counter. And I want to press down and just give it a little, little shimmy. I want to make sure I get a nice, clean cut all the way through and I want to come right up to that edge. So I want to try and get as many biscuits out of this as I can on this first roll. Okay. Flour in between. So you should be able to get about 12 on the first cut. Maybe slightly more. It right. depends on the size of your cutter. So if you go with this, you can go smaller with a mini biscuit cutter. Go larger, make big jumbo biscuits for strawberry shortcake and things right so we are going to go the thicker part here and like I said now I'll rework this dough later um, it's actually better I find to rework it if you let it rest a little bit so I'll bunch this back up into you know a loose ball and I'll pat it back out and I won't need to do the folds on the second time right we already did all that folding don't do that again because that'll just toughen things up as you go, <coughs> just pat it that second time. Okay. So pull out all the excess. And we're gonna put these onto our baking sheet to finish them off. Okay. Now, you have options when it comes to finishing your biscuits. You can leave them plain. You can use an egg wash. We're gonna use a buttermilk wash on these today. I'm just trying to clean a little gunk off my hands here. A little dry flour. Right, get most of it off, but we're gonna take and put these onto a baking sheet with some self half. So I've already got the oven preheated to 425, and we're gonna use the silpat silicone liner. You could use parchment paper for this, or you could just use a nice non-stick baking sheet. Okay, so we're gonna take and put these on the tray. They do rise some, they don't spread a lot, so you don't have to give a huge amount of space in between. up here. I said a good good bench scraper is a handy tool if you like to do baking. Breads, doughs, crusts, things like that. Because this is also a great cleaning tool, which you'll see in just a second. So we've got all our biscuits spread out. So we've got our 12 here on the tray. So I'm just going to set these aside for a second. We're going to clean up our workbench a little bit with the bench scraper, right? And that's what it's ideally for. Use this. So all those little dried bits of flour and butter and everything else, they ended up from shaping our biscuits. And I got my hand here on the edge. I'm wearing my trash cans right here. I don't want to throw this onto the floor. All right? Then you end up with a nice clean surface. Okay. So now with the biscuits to finish them off, I'm gonna do a buttermilk wash. You can press them a little bit in the center with your fingertips or your thumb because as biscuits rise, they tend to rise um, curved if you don't. So just a little indent, kind of slows down the center for a second while we're getting them prepped to go in the oven. And what I've got here is just a couple tablespoons of buttermilk and my pastry brush. So you wanna dip it in really good, but Wipe off that excess, okay? And we wanna just brush the tops of each biscuit. Now you can leave, like I said, you can leave these plain. You could do an egg wash instead. You could make them sweet. You can make them savory, right? Uh, when you're doing the biscuits, you can mix in things like cheddar cheese or put a little cheddar cheese on top. I'm gonna leave half of these plain with just the buttermilk. And half of them are going to get sweet treatment for strawberry shortcake and things like that with some vanilla sugar. So this is the vanilla sugar we made in class a while back. Um, some vanilla beans that were split, put into the sugar. This was oven dried for a little bit. Um, but this will give a nice little crunch to the top of your dish. So if you're doing these for a sweet dessert application, definitely put sprinkle a little bit of sugar on top, a little um, vanilla sugar or cinnamon sugar, right? It'll give you a great little crunch and a little shine on the end on the finished product too. Right. So we're just gonna come in and sprinkle that on. 
you know, pretty generously. Right? I like to have them, you know, if I'm gonna have them for shortcake, I want them to be a little sweet. Right? Have that nice little crunch finish. Okay. And then these are gonna go in the oven. So if you make them super thick, half inch, because these are kind of in between, you know, closer probably to a quarter inch. Um, these are probably gonna take anywhere from five to 10 minutes. If you make the super thick biscuits, you know, half inch or more, they're gonna take a little bit longer. So when you see things like this, you know, when it says, you know, 15 minutes on a recipe, don't believe that that's set in stone. There's a couple of variables. One is the way that your oven works. So you you kind of know if your oven runs a little hot or a little cold. Um, but also the size of the cutter. So if you're not using the same exact cutter as a recipe, if you're not rolling it to the same exact thickness, all those variables change. So what you want to do is start checking your biscuits after about five minutes, okay, and make sure that if your oven's a little uneven when it cooks too, spin that tray around so that it gets evenly browned all the way around, right? So I have a tray here that is done. Look at these babies, right? So these are the ones with the vanilla sugar. So it's hard to see on this green, but there's little tiny black specks, right? So it's the vanilla beans, the caviar from the beans. Um, so nice, you're looking for, you know, golden brown color on the bottom. Okay, like I said these are a little bit on the smaller snacking size biscuits. I could make them much bigger and they'd be thicker. I could roll them thicker as well. Um, but these are great little biscuits to have with jam for breakfast, right? So you can easily have, you know, a quick breakfast. You could take and use two of these to make a sandwich without having to split them. Um, but when you're serving them, you know, for breakfast or something like that, you know, a little bit of jam goes a long way. This is just a little homemade strawberry rhubarb. Right. Um, and then you can have a nice little breakfast with your biscuits. Okay. So super simple. Like I said, they can be sweet with things like sugar and jam. They can be savory with different spices. So you can sprinkle on things, you know, um, different dried spices that you have on hand. Um, Brush them with a little melted butter and like cayenne pepper or chili powder. So if you're going to have biscuits to go with things like, you know, um, homemade chili and things. So super simple. The other thing is, is that you can freeze the biscuits. So um, there's no way I'm going to go through this menu today. So these will get, now that they're cool, throw them into a Ziploc bag or an airtight container into the freezer. And then just pull them out, you know, about a half hour before you want to eat them. And they'll, you can defrost them in the microwave as well, right, um, on low power. But they thaw quickly so you can make a big batch and then have extras for a weeknight meal, okay? So that's it, that's your buttermilk biscuits. All right, um, super simple, easy, but just remember the technique is the key to this, right? Cutting in that fat carefully, barely mixing the batter, right? And then doing the folds and a lot of padding, not so much about kneading and mixing the dough, okay? Um, you gotta be gentle with this. And it'll come with feel over time. So it'll probably take you a couple of times to make biscuits before you get them just right. So don't get frustrated by it. Uh, but it is a technique that's worth learning how to do. Okay, so that's it for today.